let's talk about the tessellated electromagnetic space structures for the exploration of reconfigurable adaptive environments. Rolls off the tongue. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about the Tesseray project. What is the Tesseray project? Yeah, so Tesseray, like every good um, space acronym, it really <laughs> it has a lot of moving parts. Um, it actually spun out of our founder, Ariel Ekblah's PhD thesis at MIT. Um, and Ariel's great because she takes inspiration from so many different fields. And so Tesseray really came out of a lot of the work that Buckminster Fuller did with um, Buckyballs yeah. and these ideas from everything from like viral capsids to protein folding to just like tessellating patterns in nature and taking these kind of disparate ideas and bringing them together in a structural architectural concept and then applying that to space. Um, and so Tesseray is a self-assembling um, structural concept applied to space habitats. Um, and so it's based on a truncated icosahedron, which also rolls off the tongue, <laughs> which is um, a 32 tile solid based on, um, I believe, oh God, why am I blanking on the number of tiles of each shape? It's basically made of pentagons and hexagons. Um, and Tesseray, the idea behind it is that you could launch these tiles that were packed kind of like Ikea furniture, like in a flat pack stack, like a Pringles can. Um, and then they would get to space and they would use semi-permanent electromagnets to self-assemble because in space, you know, you don't have a lot of the, you're not fighting gravity. Um, you can do a lot more with magnets than you can on earth. Um, and so these tiles would self-assemble and close into a structural shell that you could then populate and pressurize and make into a habitat. Um, and so a lot of the work under the Aurelia umbrella right now falls um, into kind of proving and designing out Tesseray across scales. Um, so we have multiple generations now of flight hardware of scale down um, mini Tesseray hardware that have flown uh, twice to the International Space Station. Um, the Gen 4 tiles are hopefully going to fly again pretty soon to the International Space Station. Um, and we just flew those little tiles on um, a zero G flight in February. Um, and by scale, I mean, they are quite small. Like there may be the Gen 4 tiles are probably the size of my hand stretched out. Um, and we fly them during these zero G flights and they, we watch their behavior, um, how they bond, how they uh, find each other and um, eventually form large structures and shapes in that truncated like a C drawn shape. Um, and then kind of on the other, the full, the full opposite side of the spectrum, um, some of the work that I'm leading right now is the Tesseray case study. And so what we're doing is we're doing um, like the engineering work behind designing a full scale Tesseray habitat um, imagined as a four crew biotechnology research station. Um, and so that looks like, what are the solar panels look like on that thing? You know, what do the radiators look like? How much heat does it have to reject? How much power does it need to generate? What does the lab space look like? How many quarters are there? Where do the quarters look, uh, what do they look like? Um, and then designing it really to be this sort of midterm functional habitat that's like not quite like orbital reef near term, but the next thing um, as a space to live and work in space. I want to probe into every single thing that you mentioned. I'm going to start with the shape and the composition. So you mentioned there, pentagons, hexagons. Why did you choose that shape? And what are they made of? What materials did you choose and why? Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be speaking for Ariel at this point. Um, and so the, the, the Buckminster Fuller kind of buckyball shape, um, the, the short answer is that it's almost a sphere. <laughs> and so the idea behind a sphere is that uh, you have a maximum volume to surface area ratio. Yeah. And so for a, amount of mass, you get a very high volume. Uh, and volume for, you know, uh, keeping a crew alive and healthy and happy in space. Um, they want a certain, you know, you, you want to provide them with enough space to, to, to grow and flourish and like not be on top of each other all the time. Um, I like to compare it. Like if you're going to be stuck inside with, you know, five, five or six of your closest friends for six months, do you want to be in a tent or do you want to be in like a four bedroom house? And you probably want to be in a, in a larger space. Yep. Um, and Buckminster Fuller and some of those, you know, ideas behind the buckyball, um, we was very like, inspiring concept for terrestrial architecture and again drawing on aspects of nature and um just like the beauty of sort of these these shapes that all match up on their sides and come together um so it also worked really well with magnets it turns out you can work well it, you can place magnets along the faces of these pentagons and hexagons 
in a way where the fields line up for each other to actually bond and, and uh, um, generate, you know, a shape together. So we spoke a lot about beauty earlier. Can you comment on the beauty that's inherent in the Tessere project? And how do you go about conceptualizing these designs that you think might appear beautiful? Like, how do you how do you brainstorm what impact that beauty might have as you're thinking about this project? It's a really good question. Um, I think for me that the tile based work, um, it reminds me a lot more of like fractals and just in general has more visual interest than like a cylinder would. Um, and so you get this like natural variation between the pentagons and hexagons where one's slightly smaller than the other. And so you can use one for a window, but then the other for your galley space. And so you have these like natural kind of, discrepancies of the way you're artificially constraining your design space, which is, I think, good. I think coming from an aerospace design background, you you want constraints because it gives you a place to start working. Um, otherwise, your space is too big and you don't know where to start. Yeah. Um, and I think with, you know, these pentagons and hexagons, you get these really cool options for where the lights are and where the windows are. And you get these, like, just beautiful angles that are... I think with you, if things are too uniform and too square, you end up with kind of a, um, a visual lack of interest where it's like a little bit too brutalist or sad or boring. And I think it's like the right balance between things are, things are organized, but they're um, not just like a blank void, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 